Hello, my name is Eddie Tofik. I'm Head of Technical Analysis and Senior Markets Analyst at ADM Investor Service International Limited. And here is your weekly technical analysis of Chicago wheat and corn. I'll start with Chicago wheat. There is a lot of complexity here in recent days, and by recent days I mean since the peak in November. First off, the most obvious pattern was the monthly key reversal down made in January. This was completed with a big combined daily key reversal down and bearish engulfing pattern on the last day of the month. And that was this past Monday. So, some pretty heavy duty incentive there, you'd think, or so it seems. This next piece is a complex piece of technical analysis pattern recognition. We have possibly three, maybe four patterns in operation all at the same time. The first one is a completed head and shoulders top from the beginning of November last year until early January this year. It looks a little lopsided and the neckline was breached currently at uh, 70, 732. However, there was no follow through lower from the breach and the market turned back again. Yet here again, this did not turn out to be a head and shoulders continuation pattern as the market barely made it up over the top of the right shoulder at 827 and did not approach the top of the head at 875. This is a conundrum and one that is still not sorted out as we shall see shortly. The one pattern that was completed and reached target was a small early to mid January double bottom, which led into the attempt just over the right shoulder. The second pattern is one in the making. It is to look at the action from late November last year to date as a possible reverse head and shoulders pattern in construction. So far we have formed the left shoulder, the head, which is the split head in January created by the previously mentioned double bottom. And we may now be forming the second shoulder, possibly it all depends if prices turn back up to the neckline, which is currently at 836. This is not a perfect pattern as it intuitively seems to be too high up in prices, but the potential action since November 2021 does look appealing. The third possible pattern is created from using a combination of the two necklines from the previous head and shoulders patterns to form a possible expanding wedge pattern. Thus we have the upper wedge trend line currently A36 from the November last year to date potential reverse head and shoulders pattern and the lower trend line currently 732 from the earlier beginning of November last year until January this year head and shoulders pattern. Now there is a certain elegance to this pattern though once again it seems to be slightly in the wrong place. Finally there is a possible bear channel pattern formed from the neckline currently at 732 of the earlier beginning of November last year until early January this year head and shoulders pattern making the lower bear channel line and then the mid November 2021 to date downtrend currently at 826 making up the upper bear channel line. This one is also interesting and has merit. Now, I know this has been a lot to process uh, that I've thrown at you in a very short amount of time. So please feel free to replay this video to see what I mean. I just wonder how that I've managed to get my, I just hope that I've somehow managed to get my complex points across. Well, now I have to see how and if these patterns play out. Chicago corn. I've mentioned in the following now for quite a few weeks. Originally, I spoke about it some 14 weeks ago, and I quote, on top of all this, there was, is one other option that made itself available. It was to look at the July today action as a possible descending wedge pattern. There is merit in this with the lower trend line well below, currently at 443. And this week's move up, now remember this was 14 weeks ago, being a break upwards and away from either the descending triangle or the descending wedge pattern. End of quote. These two patterns were constructed over the summer of 2021 and I've detailed them in depth enough already. However, I should point out that it was the upper trend line for both of these patterns, currently at 462, that was broken back in mid-October. 
Now, going back to my commentary from 14 weeks ago, I also added the following some, well, some 12 weeks ago, actually, and I quote, I gave some thought, thoughts on potential targets for the descending wedge pattern. Well, unsurprisingly, the initial potential target for this pattern ties in with target X3 in the 605. However, the secondary target for this pattern is lower. Target X5 for this pattern is in the 626 area. I should say actually higher, actually. Um, so that's the end of the quote. These were the targets overhead for this large descending wedge pattern. In late December last year, the market reached up and fulfilled target X3. However, it took until last week to finally fulfill target X5. Nevertheless, it is now done. What took the market up here obviously took some time and a lot of indecisive individual moves on a daily basis and perhaps more importantly, a lot of indecisive intraday action with daily markets countering each other in one case to the fourth level before the market finally and slowly reached its upper target. The way up was started by the support offered by back in November of last year by the long moving average, currently of 578. I quote once again from about 11 weeks ago on this when I said, yet I still suspect the long moving average below may be the core of recent support, end of quote. Thus in November we saw the establishment of a small, very shallowly bullish bull channel, currently 578 to 607, with the long moving average as the core support. Interestingly, it is still there today. Anyway, by mid-December, the market attempted to break higher, this, for, this time fulfilling target X3. However, this attempt higher was swiftly batted down, but not enough to extinguish what has turned out to be a new, slightly stronger bullish incentive as prices created a newer, more acute bull channel, currently 600 to 647. This time, the driving force higher seems to have been, and still is, the more acutely rising short-medium moving average, currently at 600. This has become intertwined with the lower bull channel line since early January. The most recent feature has not only been the attainment of target X5 in the 626 area, but a significant move up over and seeming stabilization on the 50% Fibonacci line of the May to September 2021 move at 616. Now, looking higher, we now have the June 2021 high at 649 as the next resistance level. And I suspect it may be tougher than it looks, as beyond that we have seemingly little of note until the March 2013 high at 719. Yes, 719. For your information, you'll note that the upper bull channel line crosses over the 649 level early next week. Thank you for listening. This weekly broadcast gives essential market patterns and consequences. Please be aware of the risk disclaimer posted with this broadcast. Copyright is Eddie Tofpik and ADM Investors Services International Limited. And here comes the final bit. <laughs>